Hello, so this talk is about how to convince your left brain to follow the open source path that your right brain desires. And left brain might also mean someone else, uh, like your manager, we'll see that. My name is Bertrand de la Creta. I'm with Adobe uh, in Switzerland. I'm a principal scientist in the Adobe Experience Manager team. And I'm also very much involved in open source. I've been on the board of directors of the Apache Software Foundation for a number of years and quite active in several projects and at the foundation level. Um, let's start by, you know, what's exactly this left to right brain thing? You're probably aware of it, but just to be clear, the left brain is what's commonly thought as being the, the logic, you know, the rational part of our brain, of our thinking. And the right brain is more artistic part, the creativity, the, the you know, the, all the, the impulses, the, the unclassified, uh, vague things. That's the, the right brain. <clears throat> and we'll see how, how both can work together and how um, open source addresses both, actually. Open source contributions, I would say. Um, let me start by, by a story. <clears throat> um, more than 30 years ago, I attended Musicians Institute in Hollywood, California, uh, a fantastic music school with great teachers. Uh, that was a one-year full-time program. I did. Uh, I was studying drums. Uh, you can see me on the in the, this yellow circle here at the graduation ceremony. And uh, there's uh, four things that that I noticed about this experience that are pretty similar to what's happened been happening to me in open source. Um, in the school, there, there was a, a very friendly competition between players. No, you look at the others, oh, today he played better than me, and maybe tomorrow I can play better than him. And it was all very friendly, but you were, were all, always measuring your progress against the others. And it was a very, uh, you know, very good incentive to get better and try to do, try to do your best. Uh, the second thing was making mistakes in public. I did some very interesting ones in front of the whole cafeteria where people start looking at you, what's this guy doing? Um, it, it's very interesting for your ego. And then you also learn to accept that and, and fix them. And there's a lot of that in open source as well. And uh, the, the most striking thing for me about this school is how my, my hearing improved. I would listen to things that I recorded before school, when I finished the school, and, and the mistakes were jumped in, would jump in my face, you know, and before I might not even have heard them. And just by listening to great players for one year, my he hearing, my musical hearing improved immensely. And that, that's an interesting, uh, also parallel with open source. And this also gave me an opportunity to travel the world, you know, move to California, have a baby there. It was a very interesting experience and, and where you learn a lot. And we'll see that there's a number of parallels between that and my experience in open source. Coming back to the to the brain thing, my right brain wants autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Really, you know, I want to be able to decide what I want to do uh, and must do things that I master, that I'm comfortable doing, and for a purpose. I think that's pretty common aspirations. It's not, you know, there's a great book about that. It's not just from me, but I think that that's a that, that matches my, my way of thinking about that. The left brain wants food, clothing, shelter, a few extras maybe, but that's, that's the basic thing. You know, it's, more, it's the rational aspects of the thing. And can we demonstrate benefits to both sides from open source contributions? I think we can. And we see, you know, we, I'm thinking about my own left-right brain, but if you're in an organization, like a company, or an, or an organization also has a right brain side, more creative, and a left brain side, the, what we sometimes call the bean counters, you know, the, or, or the money aspects of the company, you need to make a living as a company. You cannot just do only fun stuff. So the left-right brain analogy, I think, applies pretty well to companies or organizations. And I think, yes, we can demonstrate benefits to both sides of this brain, either the human brain or the corporate brain. The first thing that I that I think happens in you know when you contribute to open source projects, it fosters better programmers. I I've been contributing to open source since the early 2000s, so 20 almost 20 years now, and I think I've better be, I've become a better programmer through that. 
And really, I didn't take any formal courses or very few. I learned by osmosis, by learn, you know, seeing what others are doing, seeing great code, reading code that they've been writing, learning in discussions. In, in uh, you know, when you when you discuss how you're going to solve an issue in an open source project, and that that's been immensely beneficial for me. And I think it can work for others as well. There's several reasons to that. The first is that. When you contribute to open source, it's often pretty serious or critical projects. I'm taking the example of the Apache Software Foundation, which is the the organization that I know best in this space, which has about 300 projects today. Many of those are industry changing or critical. You know, if I uh, I, w- I could mention Hadoop, for example, or Lucene, or Spark, or the, you know the HTTP web server, which uh, which powers a large part of the internet. All of these projects are industry standards. They're critical. They're very important. And contributing to that means you need to do a good job. Plus, it's in public. You know, your your contributions are visible by everybody. So you want them to be good. And I think this fosters, uh, you know, co- the quality of the code. <clears throat> and also, the there's a, the the same kind of friendly competition that, that I saw at my music school, where, you know, you're competing against others to to write good code not to be better than them but to do a great job overall you know to make sure the project is is uh, is in really good shape and and by seeing all these contributions fly by with different styles with different techniques you learn a lot and uh, and if you do mistakes in public if you're in a healthy uh, community they will help you fix them or you know they will say um, this code could be better. Here's how you could improve them, and then you learn to improve it, and you become better. So yes, I think definitely uh, contributing to open source makes you a better programmer. You are exposed to high quality code. You you know you 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 refine it collaboratively with others who might have different ideas, different techniques. And often you're exposed to above average programmers. There's a lot of excellent people, you know, CTO level uh, folks or people who have been doing the, the complex things for many years. Uh, so I think that that's really, that's really a plus as well. And also I think it makes you happier because you get great results. You can see the impact of what you're doing. And that's the, you know, that's the purpose part of the autonomy, mastery and purpose. So yes, I think definitely contributing to open source makes people better programmers. I think it also makes people better communicators. Uh, you know, when you work in an open source project, it's a multicultural environment, it's remote, it's distributed, people are different time zones, different bosses, different cultures, different mother tongues. There's a lot of diversity which makes it harder to, to communicate and collaborate. And especially the asynchronous collaboration techniques used in open source projects are extremely useful and a, an extremely valuable skill to learn for a programmer. Uh, you know, in today's distributed envi- work environments, that's something that you need to have. Many companies today, is, today are working the, uh, in a distributed way. And you learn to express your problems clearly and work in small manageable units. You know, you have to break down the problems in things that you can uh, explain to the community and that someone can understand or validate and, and work with you on it. So that, that's really, that's very, um, very useful skills to learn, these asynchronous collaboration techniques, which are widespread and which have been in large part invented in open source projects, I think. I have another talk about that, which goes into more detail. I have a link at the end of this, uh, this presentation if you're interested. So yes, I think definitely uh, contributing to open source projects makes you better communicators uh, because you learn to collaborate asynchronously in this, I call that low emotional bandwidth environments. You know, when you're con- communicating in writing, in email mailing lists or in, in tickets, um, it's it's hard to convey your emotions. You can use a few smileys, but it's it's pretty hard. It makes the communication harder, and it sometimes leads to misunderstandings. But you have to, you know, you'll be learning to work through that, and that that's very useful. Then, if you later uh, communicating in a in a higher bandwidth environment, like in a company, uh, you can use these skills and and you know take advantage of them to uh, to to more luxurious, I would say, or more efficient uh, communication environments. And this again, this also makes you happier. Because it's efficient, you get concrete results, so it will, you know, it's a, it's good for your 
for your happiness as well, which is an important part of this, in the, more in the right brain side. But even if you think about left brain, <clears throat> you know, a manager or a company wants to have happy employees. That's how you keep people. That's how you keep them motivated. That how you, how, that's how you keep them engaged. So I think happiness is also a very important uh, aspect of these things. The third element uh, that, that I think uh, people benefit from in, in open source settings is traveling. Uh, we, say, we often say that travel is the best education. I think it is. Uh, it's, it's, it, you learn a lot of things by traveling. You don't necessarily travel physically when you do open source contributions. You know, but you're interact w interacting with multicultural communities. I also have a, another talk on this, which goes in more detail. But briefly, you know, it's harder to contribute uh, to, with in multicultural communities. If you come from a certain place, you're used to certain idioms, certain ways of saying things, certain jokes, which might not work in a different culture. So you have to adapt to that. And it's often harder to understand each other when, you, when you're in a multicultural environment, especially with these low bandwidth channels that we, we mentioned before. So learning to do that will make you, you know, uh, more efficient in your work. Uh, it's kind of traveling without moving because you, you might be staying at your desk, but uh, talking to many people from different, different cultures and different countries, different places, different companies, which also have their own cultures, and I think it's very, it's very rich, it's very enriching to work in these, uh, in these environments. So yes, traveling is, is great education and working in multicultural environments is a form of, of travel, even if you don't travel physically. And then you can also travel physically. You know, open source communities, often they have meetups, which might be in your hometown, so you don't might not need to travel far, but still meeting new people, uh, or maybe this the next town. Or maybe even the world. Uh, you might go to a, to a faraway place, to an open source conference, and then it's proper travel, of course, and you will, you will learn from, from that as well. Um, of course, this can be expensive. Not everybody has resource, financial resources to do that. Uh, but many organizations have help, can help you do that. Like uh, coming back again to, to Apache, the Apache Software Foundation, Apache has a travel assistance committee, which is meant just for that. So if you have demonstrated merit in, a, in an Apache project, you can apply to this committee to have financial help for, uh, for the Apache conferences. Not everybody can be accepted. There's a limited budget, of course, but that's a great way to, to travel and you know, be, um, help you be more efficient, be more productive in this organization. So you will certainly also get to actually travel with your, through your contributions. So yes, I think travel is the best education, as we say, and uh, I think you will you can become a better and ha again happier person by traveling, either actually to conferences or virtually by just meeting these uh, these people in, from multicultural um, uh, backgrounds. So I'm already at the at the conclusion, which I'll call coda, you know, based on my musical background, um, and I think yes. Contributing to open source communities leads to better programmers because you refine critical software collaboratively with friendly competition in open environments. So that's really a recipe for becoming a better programmer. Again, by seeing code that's, that's different from what you would have written, gives you new ideas, seeing tools that you might not be used to uh, and that you will learn in these environments and so on. Uh, contributing to open source also leads to better communicators because you will learn to collaborate asynchronously in environments which are low bandwidth and harder to communicate uh, than, than in, you know, with physical uh, direct face-to-face -face environments. So that's very, very useful skills. And I think it also can make you a better person by this travel that we mentioned, working in multicultural environments and traveling the world, either virtually or actually. So I think that's three very important uh, points that you can hopefully quantify for the left brain, you know, the left side of your brain or for your manager, as we said. So these are important skills that can have an actual concrete impact on the quality of your work. So um, 
thank you for listening. If you're if you're at first backstage, I'll be available for questions in the video conference after this. Otherwise, thank you. And there's a link here to more talks about the topics that I mentioned, which are in my virtual press book. Thank you. Now, for any uh, questions and answers, um, I hope this works. Hello. 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 Can you can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Very good. Um, thank you for your talk. Um, it was uh, very good. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions. So, does anyone have any questions for Bachuan? Yep, I've got one here. Uh, thanks for the talk, and uh, to me at least, you touched upon some very obvious, um, uh, let's say, side side effects of contributing contributing to open source. My question to you is: uh, I think most of the people who are involved in one way or another in open source would agree that uh, these are actually true. Uh, the question is: Do you think that there could or should be a way to somehow measure those and quantify those for? I can think of a number of reasons why that could be useful, but I wanted to hear what your opinion is. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. So, of, of course, course measuring, measuring is pretty popular, popular today, today and, and, uh, because, because we're talking, talking left brain, brain. We, 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 we want, want to, to be able, able to measure. measure. Um, it's, it's, it's a difficult, difficult to measure, measure the, the, you know, like I, I would say, okay, you better, better become, become a better, better programmer, programmer, how much? much? Um, Maybe, Maybe a survey, survey would be interesting, interesting you know, asking, asking people uh, how, much how much you think, think or how much your, your, your environment, your management, management thinks you have improved, improved. And, and did you did take you any class, any, any courses, courses for, example? for example? Like I was, I was saying, saying in my, my case, case, I haven't, I haven't I've taken, taken very, very few courses, courses in, programming in programming in the last 20, 20 years, years but, but I think I've improved a lot just by doing that, so that would be one way to quantify that, where people indicate where, where they, they think, think uh, yeah, they, 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 you know, they, they got their improvements, improvements and then you could make statistics say, okay, 90% of the people think they have just gotten the improvements by contributing to open source. Um, the, the second point was, was, was becoming, becoming better, better communicators. communicators. It's, it's also, also hard to measure, to measure except, except by, uh, by, uh, by asking, asking around. around. So, so I think also here maybe, maybe a survey might be interesting and better persons is really hard to quantify. Yeah, I, think I think these, these are, are, in large part, these are soft skills, skills. So, 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 so kind of hard to measure. measure. I, don't I don't have really solid, solid suggestions, suggestions for that, that but, but I, I agree that, that it's, it's, it's something, something that, that we should, should, we should, we should do, do to, to convince, convince our left brain better. Bed. Okay, um, do we have any more questions? Yeah, we have one. Hey. Um, you talked about these uh, uh, autonomy, mastery, purpose, which are these nice ingredients of intrinsic motivation. So we, we are seeing yeah, open yeah. source happening a lot, not only in this kind of volunteer context where you decide to do open source, but also in the company context where it might be just part of your job to do open source. So how, how do you, what, what's your view on how you keep this intrinsic motivation when not working in a volunteer environment, but more in a corporate environment? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah of, course. of course, many, many of, us of us today uh, uh, do open source as part, part of their job, job. That, that, that's, that's my case, case indeed. Um, um, I think, I think of, of course, course, when, 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 it's, when it's business, you have, you have some, some additional constraints, constraints like, like delivering delivery delivery dates, dates or, or costs, costs that you need to take into account, account which kind of can take a bit of this of this away. I think, I think it's, it's good, good in a business, business to have, have to have, have kind of phases. phases. Sometimes, Sometimes, okay, okay you're, you're, in a, you're, in a, you're in a phase where, where you need to, to deliver your software, software and, then and then it's maybe all hands on deck, deck and, 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 you know, you, you have strict deadlines, deadlines you, can't you can't do really, really what, what you would like to. to. And then and maybe you have different phases where you want to technical improvement, technical depth, repairing mode, where you, you know, you go deeper into the quality and doing the right thing from a technical point of view. I think, I that, think that, that, that has helped, helped me all times, times to have these pretty, pretty clearly defined, defined phases. If you're working in sprints, sprints, it could be sprints, sprints where you say, okay, okay this, this is a delivery sprint, sprint. So we really, okay, okay it's, it's, it's left, left brain, brain mode, mode and, and we, we 
we might, we might not, not do uh, exactly what we'd like, like to, but we have, we have to, do to do it. it. And then they have, have a different, different phase where you say, okay, now, now it's, it's more right to involve creativity, creativity uh, and, and improving the, the tech. tech. And I think and it, it makes sense from a technical point of view, you know, if you want to to avoid accumulating technical debt, it's good to have phases where you do these kind of things. So that might be an answer to that. Thanks. Thank you for the talk. By the way, can you see us? No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The oh, camera okay. is pointing, pointing to you, so, so it's, it's very, it's very cool. cool. It's great. It's great. I, I almost, almost feel, feel like right. I'm there. <laughs> I see, I see you, you from, from the back, back, but it's, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so, but I have to look there to see you. Um, so I yeah, you yeah, talked fine, about fine. Um, open source or convincing your manager in the sense that um, open source makes you a better um, programmer, better communicator. Um, but how about the argument that maybe uh, open source also, you know, helps the business itself, like to to reach their goals faster and to save costs? Because yeah, yeah. when you get involved actively in a project, that you might actually have to like employ fewer employees because you, because you could just influence the influence the direction of a project. Would that be also a good argument for the left side brain? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think so, so, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've, I've, I've mostly focused, focused on the, on the, on the, on the people, people in this, in this talk, talk, but you're, but you're totally, totally right, there's many other, other, other benefits to, to open source. source. Uh, uh, recruiting is one that we mention often. often. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's so, so much, much easier to recruit in an open source setting because you're already working with the people in the open source space and then you know that they will fit your organization because you already know them quite well. Uh, it, it can, can also, also be, be uh, uh, I, used I used to work, to work for, for, for day, day, day software, software before, before Adobe. Adobe. Day software, day software was, was a much, much smaller company, company in Switzerland, 150 people. We were, we were very much active, active in the open, open source space, space. Uh, and, and, and it gave, gave us a reputation in the market, market and, uh, uh, that was, was, had a lot of value. value. So, so I totally agree that there's, there's, if you look at the at the more product or company oriented things, you're right that there's a lot of things that we could add to yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So, so my, my what, what I was, I was saying, saying what is really focused, focused on the on the, on the people, 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 people skills, skills and, and people, people qualities. qualities. Yeah, those are really good points. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Any more questions? Um, okay. Um, well, Bertrand, thank you very much for joining us via <laughs> video link, and uh, thank you for your talk. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.